Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Uh, this week, our simple message is this. Generosity leads to blessings of all sorts. If you learn to be a generous person, you will find an outpouring of blessing into your life. But that's not just financial blessing, it's all kinds of blessing. Listen to these words from Proverbs chapter 11, beginning of verse 24. We'll read three verses today. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I love that. And then verse 26. People curse the one who hoards grain, but they praise, but they pray God's blessing on the one who is willing to sell. The theme through this entire passage is there's kind of two kinds of people in the world. There's those who see what they have and they say, hey, I can be generous. I can share this with others. Whether it's material things or encouragement or wisdom, whatever it is, there's those who are generous of spirit and those people tend to receive back. And then there's those who are miserly, who are stingy, who are self-centered, and they hold on to things as tightly as they can. And it seems like as they hold on to it, the tighter they grip, the more it kind of runs through their fingers and disappears. And so a couple of thoughts from this passage today. This is what I would call upside down economics. In our world, it seems like the more I hold on to, the more I'll have, and the more I give, the less I'll have. But in biblical economy, the more generous you are, the more you give away, the more you actually end up having. And the more you hold on to, the less you have. It's exactly the opposite of how the world sees things, which is true of many things in God's kingdom. And so, selfishness can actually lead to lack, and generosity can lead to increase. I've got a friend in my life, I met him in seminary, his name is Ken Corver, he's a pastor down in Los Angeles, and uh, just he's been pastoring the same church his entire ministry, and he's one of the most generous people I've ever met. Ken is generous with his words. He encourages every chance he gets. Ken is generous with his time. He will give of himself for others, even people he doesn't know. He's got a real heart of a pastor. Ken is generous with his just love and care of others, and he's generous with his resources. There's nothing he has that he wouldn't make available to Jesus and share freely with others. When I think about Ken, I think of him as one of the wealthiest people I know. He doesn't live in a big, expensive home. As a matter of fact, the home he lives in is owned by the church. Uh, he doesn't have uh, fancy cars. But this guy is rich. He has a great walk with Jesus. He has a wonderful wife and children and now grandchildren. He has a meaningful ministry. He has the joy of Jesus in all that he does. It seems like the more that Ken gives, the more that he has. And that's what God's saying to us through this passage. So how about you? Are you growing in what you have because you're learning to be joyfully generous? Or are you always feeling like you don't have enough because you're holding on to everything you have and it's slipping between your fingers? Listen to the wisdom of God's word. Grow in generosity and see what God does. Will you pray with me? Living God, thank you for your generosity for us, that you, the God who has everything and the God who needs nothing, you not only give freely to us, but you receive the love that we have and the worship that we give to you. And so teach us to be generous, and as we grow in generosity, let us discover that that's the pathway to joy, and that's the pathway to, to actually having more in life that really matters as we grow in generosity. Protect us from the dangers of stinginess, and help our hearts be more like your heart, Lord Jesus. We pray this in your name. Amen. God's blessings on you. If you're part of Shoreline Church, we'll see you Sunday morning, 9 and 11. And if you're part of another local church, be part of your church. Be generous there. Be part of the life of the community of God and the place that he's put you. God bless you. Have a great day.